Before we get into the video today, I'd like to tell you all about the 23rd Archive, today's sponsor, where you can read free science fiction, dystopic, zombie superhero apocalypse fiction, as well as choose your own path adventures, and more. It's completely free, though I definitely recommend subscribing to their Patreon to support independent storytelling. The link is in the description. Our universe can be a truly terrifying place. It's absolutely true that in space, no one can hear you scream, because there's, you know, no air. Today we're going to be talking about some of the universe's scariest places, from endangered galaxies to a literal shooting star. But first, be sure to drop a like, comment your favorite object in space, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss an episode. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. There is one place in the solar system that embodies hell, it's definitely Venus. With its scorching atmosphere and extreme pressures equal to the bottom of our ocean, it's no joke. While Venus is only the second closest planet to the sun and really isn't that much closer than the Earth is, it is definitely the hottest planet in our system. And really, that's thanks to its carbon dioxide rich atmosphere and runaway greenhouse effect. On Venus, temperatures can get as hot as 471 degrees Celsius. For those of you who live in desert biomes, that's hot enough to turn you to ash. And if you're somehow unlucky enough not to be turned into human charcoal, then you would more than likely be instantly crushed by the immense pressure. In fact, a spacesuit capable of surviving the extreme temperatures and pressures on Venus would more than likely have to be made out of titanium. And without some kind of protection, your estimated survival time on the surface of Venus would be one second. Ouch. So if you ever end up on Venus, be sure to stick to the atmosphere. At least there, the temperatures aren't so bad. Though, you know, apart from the roaming clouds of acid that cycle around the planet. The exoplanet WASP-12b is an absolute nightmare object. The tidal forces exerted on this planet are so great that they stretch it into the shape of a football. And if you're from the UK, no, we mean this shape. Yes, I know, Americans are weird. WASP-12b is a hot Jupiter planet, meaning it orbits really close to its star. But something that might surprise you is that it's one of the darkest exoplanets we've ever observed. Someone should call Bruce Willis and the Fifth Element, because this exoplanet absorbs nearly 94% of the light coming from its star. But you, you don't get the reference? It's like the evil planet from, from the Fifth Element. What do you mean you haven't seen the Fifth Element? In fact, because of this unique property, WASP-12b gets as hot as 2200 degrees Celsius. Eat your heart out, Venus. Oh, and also it rains diamonds. Yep, this sucker has an overabundance of them, in fact. On WASP-12b, diamonds are as common as limestone is here on Earth. But if you're hoping that one day we'll send probes to this one-of-a-kind hellhole, think again, because its host star is slowly swallowing it. If the star hasn't already eaten it. Because, you know, speed of light and all. We've talked about this object in our black hole series, and really, if this were a ranked list of the top 10 places in the universe you should never visit, then this trifecta of a supermassive black hole collision would be number one. As mentioned before, the bird galaxy, or terminating Tinkerbell as some have taken to calling it, was originally thought to be the result of a collision by two galaxies and supermassive black holes. But it was soon discovered that this monster system was the source of not one or two black hole collisions, but three happening at once. When collisions like this occur, it causes the chance for stars to fall into the supermassive black holes to increase dramatically. And in turn, when this happens, the galaxies involved in the collision can be converted into quasars, one of the deadliest forces in the universe. As we all remember, the trouble with quasars is that the relativistic jets they produce have a chance to consume a lot of the galaxy's matter and energy, artificially aging them. The good news is that most of the stars in this triple galaxy have not collided, at least not yet. But the bad news is that it's extremely unlikely that any of the new stars being born as a result of this collision will survive the merger process. For these young stars, their fate is more than likely to go supernova before everything is said and done. If there was any sentient life here, there probably isn't now. We all know that meteors aren't really shooting stars. That doesn't stop people from incorrectly calling them that, though. But what if I were to tell you that there is a real, 
honest to god, shooting star, barreling its way through its galaxy. Our galaxy. You're probably tempted to tell me that I'm full of crap, but it's the truth. Meet Myra, a true shooting star. Myra has a cosmic tail of gas and debris that stretches 13 light years, and it just so happens to be part of a binary system. Scientists have been studying this object for over 400 years, but it wasn't until NASA's Galaxy Evolution Explorer that we spied its now iconic tail. But 13 light years. How long is that, really? Well, to put this number in perspective, that's 20,000 times the distance from Pluto to the Sun. Keep in mind that it took us nine and a half years to send New Horizons to Pluto. If New Horizons were to travel the length of Myra's tail, it would take more than 190,000 years. <laughs> Yikes. Its partner, Myra B, feeds, feeds off the material shed by its wandering star-cross partner. In fact, other stars that are perhaps lucky enough to escape Myra's wrath will likely end up feeding on this material as well. Myra has been clocked in at 468,319 kilometers per hour, which is way faster than any of the stars we've observed in our galaxy. It's also much brighter in the normal spectrum of light rather than the ultraviolet because its surface is somewhere around 3,000 Kelvin which is around 2,726 Celsius and is consequently a little less than half the temperature of our own star. Myra's Boshock swallows anything in its path, and you would definitely not want to be on a planet unlucky enough to be paid a visit by it. But if you're suddenly afraid of a roaming shooting star smashing into our own solar system like a frickin' wrecking ball, don't worry. Myra is 350 light years from Earth, but who knows? Maybe there are more Myra-like stars out there waiting to gobble us up. If you want to see Myra, it's actually located in the constellation Cetus, also known as the Whale. But don't expect to be able to see its tail, as it is only visible in the ultraviolet range of light. Clocking in at a dizzying 330 million light years in diameter, Boethi's Void is the largest void in the known universe. These voids are devoid, <laughs> get it, of matter, and what's more is that they make up a large portion of our universe. Most of the universe appears to be largely sponge-like, meaning that as it expands, voids like these are a natural byproduct. But this void has puzzled astronomers to such a degree that answers for its puzzling formation have ranged from dark energy to type 4 or 5 alien civilizations. Civilizations which would be able to harness the light and energy of their galaxies, and you know things get desperate if they start using aliens as a potential scapegoat. A Type 4 or 5 civilization would basically dim the entire galaxy from us being able to see them. Besides the cosmic web, Boethi's Void is the largest single structure, I put that in quotes, to ever be discovered in the universe. In fact, it was suggested by Greg Aldering of the University of Minnesota in 1995 that if the Milky Way were to have started its life in the center of Boethi's Void, then we wouldn't have known of the existence of other galaxies until the 1960s. So that's sobering. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment the most terrifying objects in the universe you'd like to see featured in a follow-up video. There are so many. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video. What is the, oh, oh, look at all those names. Yeah, thanks patrons. Oh look, it's done. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.